Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. Today we are going to be covering batch editing for your AI pictures. If you're just getting into the world of offering downloadable digital AI art for customer printing and you produce them in large niche batches, uh, say for example the work I have here which is a whole bunch of uh, watercolor nursery art, then you need to be adding this meaningful and automated step to your workflow so that you can stand out against your competition and improve the speed of what you can produce. Let's get to it. So I have a batch. I have this thing I just call the first batch. That's where I'm going to be using it. So you want all of your artwork that looks similar um, to be in one folder. Okay, that's these. That's the that's the place to start. So let's set up our auto editing feature by opening up just one of these photos to start through Photoshop. Okay, so I'm going to open this one up. Now Photoshop is very powerful and complex, but this process is pretty simple. Okay, so uh, if you're just starting off, just follow along and you'll get through it no problem. So the first thing you're going to want to do, if you don't already have the window viewable, you want to go up to the taskbar and click Windows and Actions. Okay, now that is going to bring up this action window up here in the top right. What we're going to do is we're going to go down to the bottom here and we're going to click on the folder icon to create a new set. And what we're going to do is we're going to title that um, Auto Corrections. Okay, that's what I'll title that. And that's basically just like a file folder for all of our um, automation that we're going to be doing. So then from there, what we want to do is want to hit this plus sign down at the bottom and we'll add an action name. So I'm going to say watercolor corrections and then hit record. Now every action going forward, you'll see that there's a record button down here and it's active, right? So it's recording every action that we take. So from here on out, we're recording our automation. Uh, so the first thing I like to do with my automation, at least for this watercolor, is I like to go to image up at the top and I go auto tone and you'll watch it and you'll see things get a little bit more a little bit more contrast a little more uh, better tone to it then I'll go to auto contrast that one didn't really do much but sometimes you'll see changes and auto color okay so now what I like to do is I like to go to image adjustments curves and I like to go to options I like to go to enhance brightness and contrast okay then I'll hit OK. OK, so we're getting a little better. Then from there, I will also go back to curves again. And I want to make this white around the owl and around the rest of the painting. I want to make it like as white as I can. I don't want it to be a little light gray because when we print it off, I want that basically to look like it's pure white like the paper. So what I do from there is I actually take this little square from here and I drag it just to the right. I want to just clip that real sharp spike at the end because that's your white. So if I just clip it just a little bit, okay, you could see that the input value is changing when I do that. Watch. See that? See it goes from 223 and it's 255. So I just want to clip it a little bit. I'll go 250. So that just brings that white, makes it a little brighter, um, makes it look a little less washed out to me. Then from there, what I might do is I might go to uh, Vibrance and tweak this just a little bit to make it look a little bit better. So I like to start with Vibrance. Just play with it a little. You don't want to go too crazy because then it starts looking funky, right? So I just bump it a little bit, maybe 20. Hmm, that's a little too much. Maybe 15. And bump the saturation. Oof, I don't have to bump it much actually because that those other adjustments kind of did it for me. So I want to make it look a little better. I think that looks pretty good. So then I hit OK. Last thing I want to do, if people are going to be printing these at home, they're going to want it at 300 dpi, okay, dots per inch. What I'm going to do is go to image and image size. And right now, it's saying, well, you can print this at 12 inches by 17 inches, but only at 72 pixels per inch um, resolution. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to increase that to 300 because that's the industry standard. Okay, but I want to uncheck the resample. Okay, then from there I hit OK and you won't really see anything change, but basically it shrunk the image down so that it's denser in, you know, dots per inch, right? The other thing that Midjourney has a little bit of a deficiency in is sharpness. Sometimes they come out kind of fuzzy. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to filter and sharpen and smart sharpen. And I'm not going to use this too aggressively. But what we want to do is we want to look at some of this 
and we want to maybe increase the sharpness just a little bit okay so you could see if I toggle the preview on and off you could see the image to the left this main image here you can kind of see it go just just crisps up a little bit right so it, you don't want to do too much because if you go crazy it'll start looking really wonky right so you want to make it subtle but you want a little improvement so I'm just gonna that back to a hundred and I like the way that looks now that we have all of our corrections in place the last thing we have to do is stop the recording so you go down here to the stop button and hit stop now we are ready to do our batch edits so now we can go ahead and X out of this project and you don't even need to save any of the changes okay now the next thing you want to do is set up a empty file for where you want your um, processed images to go. So right now I just set up one called example corrections. So that's what I'm going to use and that's where these are all going to go. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to file. I'm going to go to automate batch. Okay, from there it's asking you, well, what, what automation do you want to play? Here it is. Here's that batch automation that we just generated. Okay, so watercolor corrections. Now it's going to say, well, what folder am I going to do this from? So you choose the folder where all your source files are, okay? All the ones that you want to process. So then you'll hit select folder, okay? Now what you're going to do is you're going to choose a destination, okay? So we want it to go to a different folder. And I'm going to select the example corrections that I set up for this process, for this video. Select that folder. Now there's a couple things you can do here if you want. Um, what I like to do is you'll see right here the file naming. It says example my file dot gif okay so you can set up the file name based on these fields here so if I wanted to add like a serial number okay so I'll do a three digit serial number that way it's easier for me to keep everything in order so I'll do a three digit serial number starting serial number 001 okay and you'll see this example up here change so now it says my file 001 well since I just overrode the extension, I want to put that back, okay? So I'm going to say extension, now I'll put the .gif at the end of it, okay? So it'll rename it to whatever the file currently is, and then 001, and then it'll go 002 for the next one it processes, and 003 for the next one it processes, and so forth. So then, all we got to do is hit OK, and it's going to sit here, and it's just going to process all these, okay? Now you won't actually see it doing all the work because it's kind of doing it all behind the background okay um, what you'll see is you'll see it all start to pop up if I go back into here okay so let me go to view and large icons and you'll start to see them all popping up and it's all just happening automatically which is for me this was like the greatest thing for me to learn at the moment uh, when I'm trying to do all this work and you'll see they're coming out great all right, there we go, it is all done. Now let's go ahead and I want to show you a couple examples here. So let's go ahead and take this bunny rabbit. So the left side image on your screen is the original and the right side image is the um, auto-corrected, okay? So you can see that one and that one. So some of these are more subtle than the others, right? Little higher contrast, little more color to it. Yeah, I think it looks a little better. So that's what I like to do, oh, especially this rock, especially this rock here. It just kind of looks fuzzy, washed out. And this, it really pops, like it really looks good and it's well-defined. I um, mean, the edges of this guy are well-defined without looking like just over sharpened or anything. It just really looks more like a cartoonish, um, cute little guy, right? So now if you have another batch and you want to do it again, just go back up to file, automate, batch, I already have all this selected, so I have my auto corrections, my watercolor corrections. Now, let's say I want a different folder, right? My second batch. Here's my second batch. I'm going to select that folder. And then I'm going to go to my destination. Where do I want to dump everything? Well, let's put it back into this example corrections file. Excuse me, folder. And hit OK. Boom. Now it's going to start processing my second batch of AI artwork. Hey, pretty sweet, huh? <laughs> I love it. Yeah, and you could see it in real time, just going to town. Here they all are, right? Here they are, just churning away. Oh yeah, look at that one. Look at those colors. That just looks fantastic. 
I love that. Wow, I'm gonna have to look at the before and after for that guy real quick. Yeah, I mean, look at how this this just looks kind of flat, right? And it doesn't really, the, the colors between them don't really seem to separate as well as this one here. This one really, really pops to me. Um, so yeah, I, I'm just, I'm totally in love with this batch editing thing. I'm glad I learned it. Um, hopefully you guys learned something from this and you guys can follow along with this one. So that's all there is to it, guys. Once you set up that automation, uh, you can just keep going back to the batch editing. Um, and now if you start using a different style of artwork, um, let's say instead of, instead of, um, let's say instead of watercolor, you're deciding to go with more of a CG look or something or a video game look or this animated look like this, um, then you just, basically go into it again. So you go to your windows, you go to your actions, and you click on the folder you wanna use, come down here to new, make a new action, go through all the actions while it's recording, then hit stop record down here. And then from there on, it'll be in here, in your automation, in your batch files. And then you can just go through the same selection process here, select your source, select your destination, hit go, and boom, all of it, autocorrects and just improves everything all around while you sit back and relax and have a sip of coffee or something. <laughs> if you like this video or if you have any questions or if you have a couple other auto adjustments that you like to do, uh, feel free to leave it in the comments. Uh, also, my next video will be on how to batch upscale so that you can actually bring these to a size that you can actually print um, in larger formats. So uh, stay tuned for that and I appreciate you guys stopping by and talk to you again soon.